Hey guys, in this video today, I'm going to talk about what is one of the most important things for you to know if you want to live a good life. If you want to be happy and fulfilled and successful and healthy, then this is something that is absolutely crucial. Now, this is so important. Uh, if you have noticed, I haven't put out a video in a few weeks, and that's because I've, I've been thinking about this for a while and trying to come up with how to best communicate this. And that is that if you want to live a good life, you have to evaluate your life decisions for yourself and you cannot rely on the experts. And if you do try to outsource your thinking to the experts, then you're going to end up being a very miserable person. Now, just recently, the New York Times put out an article saying that we should all stop thinking critically that we live in an era in which thinking critically is, is a bad thing, that we should stop doing this, we should just trust the so-called experts, watch the TV, trust the people that are talking on the TV, and, and don't ever bother to research anything or to consider anything uh, by our own brains because we're all too stupid to figure it out anyway, and so we should just trust the, the so-called experts. And you see this more and more in our society that it's pushed on us that we have to accept this official narrative and anybody who dares question it is persecuted in some way. Either they're censored or they're blocked from their payment processors and the, the persecution seems to be ramping up quickly. And this way of living is very seductive for a lot of people because for one thing, it doesn't require much effort, right? You just believe what the guy on the TV says, don't ask any questions. It's, it doesn't take any effort at all. You just accept what you're told. And then the second thing is that people have a lot of pride about this, right? It, it gives you a reason to feel superior. It gives you a reason to be arrogant that, oh, uh, I believe what the experts say, therefore I believe in science, therefore I'm on the right side of history, etc., etc., etc. unlike that guy who's anti-science or anti-whatever the experts have to say. So a lot of people fall for this, but I want to make the case in this video that if you fall for that line of thinking, yes, you get the benefit of feeling better than other people, and yes, you get the benefit of getting to be mentally lazy, but at the cost of being completely miserable, poor, unhealthy, with broken relationships, and ultimately probably dying an untimely death of some preventable disease. And no, I'm not exaggerating one bit. So if that trade-off is worth it to you, then go ahead, you know, it's your life. I'm not telling you what to do. But if you want to be happy, healthy, and successful, then you absolutely have to think critically. And by the way, notice that I'm not talking about some abstract notion of, of figuring out who controls the world or knowing certain truths about the nature of reality. No, I'm talking about strictly practical here about how you live your own life depends on whether or not you choose to think for yourself rather than just accepting whatever is presented to you. Okay, so who do I mean when I talk about the experts? Who are these experts that dictate what people are supposed to believe? Well, there's a lot of categories of them. There are doctors, there are scientists, there are financial advisors, there are teachers, there are journalists, there are marketers, accountants, economists, politicians, pastors, and even charity organizations, dentists, optometrists. Th this list goes on for a long time. So what does this mean? Well, that means that when your doctor tells you that you have to take a particular drug in order to be healthy, you don't just take him at his word. You figure out what the drug does. You figure out what is the uh, problem you have that it's supposed to solve. You look at the side effects of the drug, right? You do your own research on that. It means that when an economist says that this is what's going to happen in the economy and this is the stock you should buy or this is the asset class that you invest in, you don't just take him at his word and buy that stock or that asset class. You go and do your research. See if if he's telling the truth, see if what he's saying actually makes sense. It means if the TV journalists say that this thing is true and this thing is false, you don't just believe them. You, you look for uh, manipulation, you look for lies in what they're saying, you look for, for bad conclusions, bad logic, you look for half-truths. The media does this all the time. And the same thing with the fact-checkers, right? The fact-checkers is just a fancy name for journalists who feel especially self-righteous, who feel like they are the arbiters of truth and society, which sounds a whole lot like uh, George Orwell's concept of the ministry of truth. So those are just a few very practical examples where whether or not you blindly accept what these so-called experts are telling you really can make a huge difference in your life, in your health, in your financial security. 
so this is why it's so important that you get this. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, well, why can't I trust the experts? Why would I believe that the experts are going to mislead me? Good question. There's, there's two answers to that. There's a two-part system that goes on here. First of all, expertise in the year 2021 is, is getting extremely centralized, and it gets more and more centralized as time goes on. So what that means is that every center of expertise, so for example, uh, doctors, all have, they work on kind of a pyramid hierarchy where there is one group at the top that makes all of the decisions and then all of those decisions filter down and they tell all of the individual doctors that this is what you have to do, right? So to get more specific, you have the World Health Organization at the top and then under that World Health Organization, you have various branches such as the national health organizations of the country. So like the CDC in the US or the NHS in Britain. And then you have the big pharmaceutical companies that have power. You have the big hospital companies. And then you have the individual clinics and the individual doctors at the very bottom. And then the same thing is true with the media, where you have one big organization at the top, like the Associated Press, and then the Associated Press filters down its news stories to the, the big six uh, companies that own most of the world's media. And then those six companies filter their stuff down to the subsidiaries, the you know Fox 13 and all the local news channels. And then those companies tell the individual reporters what they have to say, what lines they have to repeat. They're the ones who write the, the text on the teleprompters. So what's happening here is that you have a very small group of people at the top of every single center of influence in society, and what they say is what all of these so-called experts, even at the bottom level, repeat. So the problem here is composed of two faults of human nature, where you have a, a power-hungry elite that has way too much power on the top. Right? Every center of influence is so centralized that a very small group of people have the ability to influence what the entire sector of the economy does, or what the entire center of influence does or says. And that level of power is very, very attractive to the sort of people who like to control others. And so you have these people who are hell-bent on control, who have an enormous amount of control, and they have very little concern for the well-being of normal average people. So that's problem number one, is the concentration of power in the hands of corrupt and power-hungry people. And then the second problem is general intellectual laziness, which is what most people, well, really all of us suffer from to some extent. And so you have these people, say, at the top, that are the power-hungry people, that are saying to the people under them, Here's your message. This is what you have to believe. This is what you have to repeat. This is what you have to drill into the minds of everybody who's listening to you. And so the people below them just nod their heads and do it. And they say, okay, I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to critically analyze it. The people on top tell me that this is what I have to say, so this is what I'm going to say. A great book I read years ago that, that I highly recommend, I'll put a link in the description, was the book Thinking Fast and Slow by a psychologist named Daniel Kahneman. And in that book, he detailed all of the ways that our, our psychological nature is wired to avoid thinking deeply. That thinking deeply is a drain on resources, that when we are, are thinking slow, as he would put it, our slow thinking, or our methodical, or our deep thinking, our critical analysis, actually takes up a lot of glucose. It takes up a lot of energy in our brains, and so our brains are actually adapted for mental laziness because it, for survival benefit, we can get by with less food if we don't think as much. And so that's kind of the default state of the human being, and so we have to make a, a concentrated, conscious effort to rise above that primitive state if we want to be successful in this very complex world that we find ourselves in now. And so most of the rank and file experts, most of the doctors, most of the economists, most of the scientists, the accountants, etc., 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 are mostly in this frame of mind where they receive the instructions from above, they repeat it as gospel, and they never really bother to think about it. So, this information that comes from above, that comes from these governing bodies, from these governments, from supranational organizations, from giant multinational corporations, well, 
most of us tend to fall in this trap of just kind of assuming that these people in these positions of power are looking out for our best interests. But I want to make the case that more often than not, it's the opposite. That really these people are, are much more interested in increasing their own power, and a lot of these people are actual sociopaths who really care nothing for for sacrificing us little people. And if you think about it for a minute, this what I'm saying here is, is just common sense on multiple levels. I mean, psychologically, we know that there are people in the world who are hell-bent on power and do not care about how much damage they cause to others, right? And so it just stands to reason that these people who are entirely focused on power would attain their goal, right? They would meet up in groups with other people who, who are similarly focused on power. They would create secret societies whose sole aim was to conquer these centers of influence and gain more power for themselves, and they would be perfectly happy to lie and manipulate the people in order to attain that end. Right? That's just a logical conclusion of the recognition that these people exist in the first place. If these people exist, then obviously that's what they would be doing. This is also true biblically. The Bible says that Satan is the god of this world. So it stands to reason that since Satan is the god of this world, then the people with the power are the people who follow Satan. They are not the people who follow God. They are not the people who have other people's best interests in mind. They are people who have their own pleasure and their own power and their own pride. That, those are their goals, and they're perfectly happy to sacrifice people in order to get to those goals. And of course, this is also true historically. There have been countless examples throughout history of people who are perfectly willing to sacrifice thousands or millions of people's lives in order to gain more power for themselves. This is something that is just ingrained into man's imperfect nature. And anybody who tells you that humankind has risen above that, that we have evolved past that point, is fooling themselves, and they are probably going to end up poor, miserable, and unhealthy due to their naivete. Either that, or they're the psychopaths themselves who are trying to mislead you. And by the way, I want to clarify that this is, is not 100%, right? That there are exceptions in both categories, that there really are powerful people who want to do good in the world, and there are people who uh, put themselves in, in positions of power to do good in the world. They may be a minority, and to tell you the truth, most of the time they're shut out from those positions of power because they're a minority, and they, the, you know, the majority doesn't want competition. But there are some, and there are also plenty of people who are in the lower part of the hierarchy, the, the rank-and-file experts, so to speak, who really do have people's best interests in mind and are not intellectually lazy, who actually do go out and do their own research and are willing to put in a little bit of mental effort so that they can serve their clients, so that they can serve their audience well. And you can usually tell who those people are because they're persecuted, right? We're seeing this ramping up to an unprecedented extent, right? They're persecuted on many different levels, that they're kicked out of academia if they hold some sort of view that's, that's against the normal orthodoxy. They're not invited to talk on the media, or they lose their jobs in the media, or they lose their jobs in politics because of fraud or because of corruption or because of media manipulation. And now we're even seeing the power structure is trying to silence them completely by censoring their voices on the internet. You have people being kicked off of YouTube, you have people being kicked off of Facebook, including people who are qualified, people who are scientists, who are doctors, who are economists, who have studied these topics and should qualify as experts, but no, they're just quacks or they, you know, they're, they're shunted to the side because they question the orthodoxy. They question the people at the top of the pyramid who have all the power. And so now these people are even being denied a platform to speak, and it's actually getting worse. They're actually getting kicked off of even website hosts, and payment processors are refusing to process transactions for them, so they can't make any money and they can't make a livelihood for themselves. The persecution is ramping up and probably will continue to do so. Okay, so that begs the question, if you can't trust the experts, then what do you do, right? If you can't trust your financial advisor, if you can't trust your accountant, if you can't trust your doctor, if you can't trust your pastor, and by the way, religious figures are no exception here. It's, I, I, it pains me to say this, but uh, religious leaders are some of the worst offenders, and the reason for this is because Religion has a lot of power over people's lives. 
I'm a religious person. I think religion is a very good thing. But these psychopaths who want power, they recognize that religion has power, that religion has a lot of influence, so they insert themselves into the religious power structures. And so if you follow a religion that is especially hierarchical uh, and especially centralized, then it's especially susceptible to that kind of influence. So, I mean, the best example is the Catholic Church, where there's one man, the Pope, who is in charge of the entire structure. So you can imagine for somebody who's bent on gaining power for himself or for his small group, that that position of being at the top of a very influential religious group is very, very attractive, and they will do everything they possibly can to get control of that position. So what do you do when you come to the realization that you can't just trust people because of their credentials? Well, there are a few things to do. Number one, and most importantly of all, is you do your own research, right? Whatever it is, if you're researching how to invest your money, if you're researching uh, what's the best career track, if you're researching what to go to college for, if you're researching um, a disease that you've been diagnosed with, you have to do it yourself so that you gain an understanding of it and you can understand what is the best way to treat it. And then from there, once you've gained this understanding, and there's no getting around this step, by the way, if you try to skip this step, then you're going to be disappointed. So once you've gained an understanding of it yourself, that's when you, you basically have two choices to make. One is you can do everything yourself right? You can medicate yourself. You can choose your own health treatments. You can choose your own diet, your own nutrition plans, your own supplementation, etc. in the case of your health. Or you can choose your own investment options or, you know, whatever it is in the particular case. Uh, you can do it all yourself or you can hire an expert that can help you with it. But instead of just saying to the person, just do it for me, then it becomes a partnership. Right? You bounce ideas off of each other. You create your plan together instead of just blindly trusting the person to do it for you. And so this way you have a lot more power than if you just trust the person because one, you can find somebody who aligns with the research that you've already done, who, who understands the things that you know, right? Because if you find somebody who just is, has a completely myopic vision that's shaped by the person at the top of the pyramid, then you don't even hire that person in the first place. You find somebody who is willing to be, at least has an open mind to hear what you have to say. And then you come up with a plan together. And so the expertise is very valuable here, right? When it's not somebody just blindly parroting something, a, a doctor who has been through eight years of med school and, and understands all of the ins and outs about how the cellular mechanisms work and that kind of thing is a very, very valuable resource to help you come up with the best plan for you. Or an economist or financial advisor who knows all of the fancy financial lingo is going to be able to help you uh, to direct your path in the right direction because you can work together as a team rather than you just trusting someone blindly. And by the way, when I say don't trust people blindly, I'm also talking about myself, right? I'm also talking about alternative media. I'm also talking about YouTubers and people who are not the so-called normal credentialed experts, right? Because for one thing, the power structure is starting to realize that people that are outside the system are starting to gain influence, and so they're starting to insert themselves here as well. So you have that kind of corruption going on here. And secondly, even if the alternative media person or the YouTuber that you follow really does have your best interests in mind, he's not going to be right 100% of the time. I'm not going to be right 100% of the time. And even if I am right about something generally, doesn't mean that I'm right about something as it applies to you. So there's just really no possibility of outsourcing your decision making to someone else. Just because I say that something is the right lifestyle choice or I say that something is a good investment does not mean that it is for you. Maybe it means it is for me, but it doesn't mean that it is for you. And so I sell courses and coaching programs. That's my business. And whenever I do that, I'm very careful to never try to force anything on anybody. I never try to convince somebody that this is the right option for you. I'm always very open to them. I ask, okay, what is it that you want? What are your values in life? Because just because I think that something is great, and I do think that all of my products are great, right? You know, I'm a little biased, but I, I try to make sure that I, I get an idea of what do you actually want? And if 
if what I have to offer is not going to get you to the place where you want to be, then I'm not going to offer it, right? I'm not going to try to push it on you. With everything I do, I'm just trying to facilitate you figuring out what you want and what is the best path for you specifically. So when you hear something from me or from any other YouTuber or any other influencer of any kind, then look it up, right? Do your own research. See if it's true. Find more information. Gain a broader understanding. And you can gain that understanding from listening to people, from listening to the experts, you know, the so-called experts and the official story, and then find the alternative stories as well. And use your critical thinking to compare the two. Right, and the difference between people like me and the so-called experts is that I encourage the critical thinking, right? People who are honest are going to encourage you to do the critical thinking. People who are control freaks and just want you to blindly believe them are going to write articles like that article in the New York Times telling you to, to ditch your critical thinking, right? And those are the same people that run the World Economic Forum that are telling you that in the near future, you're going to own nothing and be happy. Right? These people are telling you what their plan is for you. They're going to take everything that you own and you can survive just at their whim. If they feel like feeding you today, then they can feed you today. Right? This is the world that these people have in mind and they're telling you openly. Like, this is not a conspiracy theory anymore. They're just telling you. And by the way, if you were a conspiracy theorist in the past, then congratulations, you were right. Anyway, so that's what you got to do. Whatever life decision it is, you have to research it yourself. I mean, I know that's a bit of a pain, but there's just no avoiding this. If you outsource your decision to somebody else, you, you make let somebody else create the plan for you, you have no input in it, you are going to be miserable. You know, if you let your financial advisor do this without your input, you're probably going to be poor. If you let your doctor do this without your input, you're probably going to be sick. If you let your psychotherapist do this without your input, you're probably going to be depressed and anxious for a long time. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is how you do your research, right? How do you look these things up? It's getting more and more difficult, right? Because for a few glorious years there, we had this free and open internet where you could find anything you wanted and you could find all sorts of alternative viewpoints about any kind of issue and you could compare them against each other and you could make up your mind. That's getting more difficult, right? Because the people at the top of the pyramid are recognizing that this is a threat to their hegemony. This is a threat to their power, and so they are doing everything they possibly can to censor the internet, right? That's why you see all of these YouTube channels being taken down. That's why you see all of these Facebook pages being taken down. These, that's why you see all of these posts being hidden or, or being fact-checked by the uh, journalists. And this is probably only going to get worse, so what do you do about it? And, oh, and by the way, if you go on Google and you search for something, now you're getting biased search results, right? Now you get the first 10 results are all the, the journalists or the fact checkers that are completely controlled by the Associated Press. How do you get around that? Well, this trend shows no signs of slowing down, right? The censorship is getting worse and worse and worse. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to move to alternative platforms, right? If you want video content, you're going to have to stop uh, watching YouTube. Right? I'm, I'm in the process of transferring to other video platforms now. There's uh, one called BitChute that's very good. There's one called Odyssey, which is actually my favorite just because of the way it's structured. It's built on a blockchain, which means that it's completely decentralized. So that means that it cannot be censored. Not only they will not censor, but they cannot censor it. So if the, the owner of Odyssey gets uh, gets some court order saying that they have to take down a video, they literally cannot do it because it's hosted on a blockchain which is decentralized. It's a whole bunch of people are, are running it together and those people are not centralized into one organization. So I really like Odyssey. I'll put a link to my channel on Odyssey in the, in the page below and my, my channel on BitChute for that matter. BitChute is another one that's actually better on content, like there's a lot more content on BitChute, but it's not decentralized the way that Odyssey is, so there's a good chance that it might get shut down by the government in the future. Which we're already seeing, by the way, if you look at a Parler or Gab, were, were social networks that refuse to censor people based on ideas, and both of them have gotten shut down from the uh, Google Store and the Apple Store. 
and a whole bunch of other tech platforms, right? They're really, really trying to go after any kind of alternative information. So Odyssey or BitChute are great for video content. If you want to search something, I use a search engine called DuckDuckGo. You just can't trust the Google results anymore because they bury anything that comes from alternative media. They don't want you to see it, so it doesn't come up in the search results anymore. So use DuckDuckGo.com instead. Uh, for social media, uh, I think Parler is back up. There's Gab. There's a few other social media sites if you want to be able to share stuff with people. Uh, there's a great messaging app called Telegram which is just like WhatsApp, but it's not shutting down groups the way that WhatsApp is. So if you wanna get access to the alternative media, then that's a great way to do it. Now, I'm not saying that you should just believe everything that's posted on Odyssey or everything that somebody shares on Gab, right? I'm saying look at both sides. Look at the official story too. Weigh it against the alternatives because there's a lot of reactionary stuff um, on the alternative media, right? Like people are so, uh, so disappointed with the official narrative and the official story that they just automatically reject all of it without even thinking, right? So you have uh, people see something in the media and they think automatically it's a lie, uh, which, which is wrong too, right? We have to be able to use our logic and look at the two sides and see which one makes more sense because not 100% of the media is wrong, right? Sometimes they do in fact tell the truth occasionally. So it's equally a mistake to just follow some sort of alternative media, some sort of reactionary media, and say that that's right 100% of the time. I'm going to outsource my decisions to the alternative media, right? It's still making the same mistake. So that's it. If you are diligent about doing this, you will see massive improvements in every area of your life. I certainly have because I never bought into the mainstream narrative on anything. And as time goes on, I'm more and more skeptical of the things I hear. I'm more and more likely to research it for myself. I'm more and more likely to find uh, alternatives and to live my life according to the information that makes the most sense for me. So I don't care that the media says that Bitcoin was going to die like 50 million times over the last 10 years, right? I bought Bitcoin anyway, and I made a lot of money off of it. I don't care that the education system and the media and the whole power structure is, is trying to convince me to be an atheist and that God and spirituality don't exist. I know that they exist. I've seen them in a million different manifestations and I live my life accordingly. And as such, I've become very happy and successful, right? I encourage you to do the same and you will see massive benefits in your life as a result. So that's it. If you like this video, I have a free gift for you. I'll put a link in the description below to a free mini ebook called The Eight Daily Habits for Success, Happiness, and Spiritual Fulfillment. Just, just a little thank you for hearing me out on YouTube. And of course, hit the thumbs up or the fire button or whatever the like button is on the video platform that you're viewing this on. Subscribe to my channel, share this video with anybody who it might be helpful to, and t tell me about your experience in the comments. When have you defied the uh, official story and how has it turned out? Did it benefit you in the end? Let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm very interested. And then if you enjoyed this video, I think you'd also really like this video also.